Ooh, me too, me too, me too. That's exactly what we're talking about today, me too branding. It's also called copycat branding. But basically what copycat or me too branding is, is when if you take the logo and the brand identifying elements away from a company, is the message indistinguishable from competition? Are the messages and the look and the feel, are they so similar that it causes confusion between customers and prospects? It's when a brand closely resembles another company. You don't want to do this. This is bad. When you cause confusion, then people don't know if they're working with you or if they're working with someone else. So I once worked with this company who they decided that they wanted to intentionally be a me too company. And they wanted to do this by taking their top competitor's name and reversing it. So the company's name was Tech Up and they wanted to become Up Tech. Their goal against advising for me they did not want to listen to it, they wanted to truly be a Me Too brand, was to confuse the market so they could steal market share. It worked. They confused the market and they would get their competitors' clients calling them to have services done and to get new business. They grew fast. They loved it. But after I think it was about two years, the original company, the founder of that company got in trouble with some financial issues and was charged with fraud. Guess what? Now the entire market knows that Tech Up was charged with fraud. And this new company, Up Tech, because it's confused the market, consumers can't tell the difference. So as fast as they grew, and as much market share as they, they uh, were able to take away, they lost it all, all because they confused the market from the beginning. It's a problem. You'll also notice that when companies or brands get really big really fast, Facebook, Twitter, it causes a surge of Me Too brands. When Facebook first opened up to be beyond college students, there were a bunch of copycat brands, my favorite being My Furry Facebook, which was intended to be for your dogs or pets, but primarily dogs is what they were targeting. Is My Furry Facebook around anymore? I don't think so. If it is, I haven't heard of it. So maybe it is, you can let me know. And then, ooh, what about the iPhone? When the iPhone launched, Absolutely, everybody rebranded that they were I something. I this, I that, I this, and it worked for a short time. So this leads to the benefits of being a Me Too brand. You get instant visibility, you get to have fast growth, and you get perceived credibility, getting you out of that initial slump that you might be in. But there's downfalls. And the downfalls outweigh the positives any way you look at it. You open yourself up for lawsuits. Lawsuits can go on for years and years and cost exorbitant amount of money. You could be forced to do an entire rebranding. And if you're rebranding, then you're gonna cause even more confusion because you have the clients who you do have that they now need to get to know your new name and then you have the market who might have been interested in you and doing business with you, but now they can't find you because you have this new, bank, new name. And then it's like, oh, well, you're this new company, so we're going to wait it out and see if you're going to make it or not. Then you also have the whole, what got you here won't get you there. When you lose, when you gain market share, based on confusing the market, in time, you put yourself at risk for losing that exact same market share for, equal, for the same reasons that you gained it, for confusing them and 
they just don't want to deal with it anymore. You're not original. You're not, there's no reason why they should do business with you because you look and sound the same as your competitor. They want something different. So there's pros and cons to it. Because before you can beat your competition, your customers have to be able to tell you apart. They have to know what makes you different from everyone else. So let's talk about four ways to identify if you are unintentionally being a Me Too brand. And we'll also talk about how you can avoid it. First step is identify who your competition is. When you identify who your competition, your real competition is, when you identify who they are, really look at what they do. What's their message? What's their brand image? How do they look? What's the feel of their brand? What's it like for a consumer, for their customers to work with them? Step inside of the mind of their customer because that's ultimately what you're trying to do is you're trying to see that company or in this case your competitor from their mindset what are they going to relate to what are they not relating to what makes them different and when you're able to do this for multiple competitors you're going to see trends and also you're going to identify what makes them different once you understand that then you can begin to look at your own brand again from the perspective of your consumer and say okay now when I look at my brand I'm seeing this is it the same is it different there's a book that I love blue ocean strategies and the core principle of the book is do you want to swim in a red ocean which is an ocean full of blood and a lot of competitors or do you want to be in a blue ocean where you don't have any competitors well the reality is regardless of what you want to believe we all have competitors. They might not be a literal competitor offering the exact same services to the exact same market, but it could be a perceived competitor. And those are just, they cause the exact same effects as a company who, in the consumer's mind, is a perceived competitor. So do you want to be the red ocean? Do you want to be the blue ocean? And how do you differentiate yourself? Then we have, do your customers and have you heard in the market that you're being confused with another brand? Now what this looks like is let's say you're meeting with a prospect and the prospect references you by another company's name. Or they mention, they, they do a compare. They'll be like, well, company A did this for me. Okay, so now they're trying to pit you against the other company. But what did they like or dislike about that company so you have a better understanding of how to position yourself? The third tip is legally protect yourself wherever you can. If you can protect your logo and have it be an original image, do that. If you can protect your tagline, if there's other brand elements or intellectual property to your business that you can protect, do it. And then don't just protect it, but monitor it to make sure that no one is stealing your brand and becoming a me too brand to you. And then finally, be aware of adjectives. The adjectives that you use to describe your business. These can include uh, full service, state of the art, most advanced, uh, groundbreaking, new and improved. You hear those words a lot. What makes you different? Full service to the average person means nothing. Okay, you're going to take care of me completely, but then they're going to come ask you a question, and most likely you're going to be like, uh, yeah, we don't do that. Well, you're not full service. It's better to own your niche. It's better to own a specific area within that niche than it is to claim to be an expert in everything. And when you own that niche, that's what you become known for. That's how you stand out and that's how you make it easier for your market to get to know the differences between you and your competitor. So post your questions and comments below and I'll chat with you there. Alrighty, have a great day.